All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Beta FPV Advanced Starter Kit. This is an RTF kit with the 75 millimeter whip with the brushless motors. There's another one that I don't have. It's all the same parts, just a different drone. It's got the brushed motors instead of the brushless motors. And it's 65 millimeters. That's like the, I guess, the beginner starter kit. So uh, Beta FPV is getting into the um, RTF starter kit for these beginners. Comes with a case, a controller, goggles and the drone and two batteries i'll show you some of the goodies here in a second uh, but basically i've done reviews already on uh, the goggles the vro1s and the light radio 2 um, i'll link those in the description if you want to check out more details on how these uh, function now the drone that they include in here is the meteor 75 light it's 1s uh, 1102 18,000 kV motors it doesn't come with beta flight it comes with the um, it's called the Light 1S all-in-one board. It doesn't have a USB port, so you can't flash beta flight to it. It uses a firmware called Silverware. And so you can still change PIDs via the OSD. I'll show you that here in a second. But you can't uh, upgrade the firmware, or at least it's not that, not that easy. I think you can, but it requires uh, a fair amount of work. So this is going to be good for beginners because then they can't plug in the USB port and update beta flight thinking it's super easy and then totally mess up their configuration so uh, this is definitely the right way to go for beginners so in addition to the one battery is on the drone you get an additional battery in the case so you get two batteries you get a usb charger um, spare set of props and you get a usb cable for charging everything, so uh, the controller, the goggles, and uh, the batteries all charge via the USB cables. So you just need, you know, obviously a wall adapter so you can give this thing power. And you do get a uh, quick start guide as well. The switches here, this one here is for arming, uh, this one here is for acro or level mode, and then this one here is for turtle mode. Okay, just to show you how to get into the OSD, you throttle halfway up, yaw to the left, and pitch up, and then the OSD menu will show up. So basically you have a menu, and you can change your PIDs, motor direction, receiver, a VTX channel, and your rates as well. I'm not going to change any of that. I'm going to fly this uh, in acro mode, and also um, just all the, all the box settings. It does feel a bit different than my normal tune that I fly. Um, not bad, it's just different. I think you can fly slow or fast, it just kind of depends. The reception is okay. So I'm not sure how much acro you can do. Let's see if I can do a roll. Oh yeah, you can do a roll. So the rates are a little bit more a lot more expo than I'm used to and rates are higher than I'm used to it's not bad though you can see you can definitely control everything just fine with this controller this is the reason why this is now the best RTF in my opinion is that the, this controller is much better than all the other RTFs out there so you are going to spend a little bit more money on this one, but you can have much more precise control. than on the uh, other RTS. Oof. It's pretty fast. 
Now, let's say if you're a little bit more ambitious, get this one, but maybe the uh, smaller one might be better suited for a pure beginner or for kids. It's not going to be as fast, a little bit more controllable. So, and I flipped over, so I'm going to turn on turtle mode. There we go. Yeah, turtle mode works. You don't hear anything weird, so I think the pops are on just fine. Oh, crash. I almost hit myself. So it takes a little bit of getting used to these rates. It's not bad though. Yeah, hitting gaps is a little bit trickier. Let's see here. Voltage warning now. 3.25 volts, about four minutes of flight. Uh, the battery's about dead. Alright, so let's try a little bit of freestyle. You know, the rate on the roll axis is a little bit much for me. Something about the about the rate on the expo is just off. Oh, crashed. A little bit of a power loop there, a lot of prop wash. Yeah, you gotta do, do your moves a little bit higher off the ground, voltage sag. Whew. A lot of prop wash. Yeah, power loop's probably not the thing for this. This might not make a bad whoop racer though, it's fast. Oh, goodness. 
I think I had a failsafe there. All right, not sure what that was. Seems to be okay. Let me just see how far away I can get with this here. I mean, it has a D8 receiver in it. Oh, the video gets really bad over there. Okay, that's why. It's because of the, where the VTX antenna is. It's pointing straight out the back. So when you're when you're going this way, it's pointing away from you. But if you go sideways like this, then you could you can get better video. So let's see here. Yeah, they, they really ought to change the way the VTX antenna is oriented on these beta FPV drones. Straight out the back is not not really the best. But you can do some mild freestyle. And you can definitely do some tree canopy flying if you're into that. It's got decent control. And of course it has to do with this controller, um, which is way better than anything else that's out there. Let's see, can I get in here? Uh, yep. No problem there. What's what makes this RTF kit the better kit to get? It's the controller, you're gonna pay a little bit more for it, but I'd say if you're trying to start out, you wanna get this controller because you can then use this on other uh, slightly bigger drones later and have good control over those. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Talk to you guys later.